Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Anandan. I am 16 years old, and I live in New Delhi. Have you ever thought about how food gets to your table? For most of us, the well-stocked shelves of a grocery store might come to mind, or we might even imagine ourselves making the perfect meal for our loved ones. We're less likely to think about farmers and farming practices all over the world. Today, I would like to talk to you all about the state of farmers, starting right here in India. On November 26, 2020, word spread in my community that farmers all the way from fertile Punjab were coming to Delhi to protest new government farm policies. Farmers reached the border of the capital on foot and in convoys of tractors. In the days and months ahead, protesters came from all over the country and pitched tents along the highways leading to the national capital, clashing with police as they were met with tear gas and water cannons. Eventually, thousands of protesters reached the historic fort as India was celebrating Republic Day. Fear of increased violence and food shortages spread in the city, not to mention the spread of COVID. The farmer protests made it to the cover of Time magazine and even reached the tweets of pop stars Rihanna and environmentalist Greta Thunberg. The resilience of these farmers was remarkable. After one year of protests, the government of India had no choice but to back down and repeal the new farm laws in the light of some of the largest protests our nation had seen since independence. Why were these farmers risking their lives to protest? What compelled them to protest for over a year, risking their lives? The farmers were protesting laws that were passed in September of 2020 without due process or debate in Parliament. These laws aim to increase private investment in agriculture while limiting government safeguards such as price control. As I watched and read about these farmer protests, I began to think about the impact that farming had on myself and the people around me and I spent the summer of my ninth grade year interning at an agriculture financial technology company to, to deepen my understanding of the issues that these farmers face. A very basic truth that is often overlooked by my generation is that we are entirely dependent on farmers for our sustenance. However, while we reap the benefits that these farmers provide, many of them are drowning in debt facing shockingly low incomes and a lack of mechanization and digitization, and suffer from the effects of climate change. Just last year in India, more than 5,000 farmers, both debt-ridden and depressed, took their lives. About 90% of the world's 570 million farms are smallholder farms that consist of less than five acres of land. Many of these farmers face the same struggles, and these farms produce 80% of the world's food supply. First, there's a lack of awareness of good agricultural practices and safe use of agrochemicals. Second, in most countries, the middleman in charge of transporting the crop from the fa farm to the factory often takes advantage of the farmer, while pocketing cash or contaminating the crop with water or other chemicals. Furthermore, farmers are unable to access credit due to, due to their lack of hard assets required for collateral. And finally, farmland is being converted into commercial and industrial lands, which leads to small plot sizes becoming even smaller. As I began to research the financial plight of farmers, I also began to understand the interlinkages between climate change and agriculture. On the one hand, extreme weather events, like the heat wave we've just experienced in Delhi, have wiped out crops. On the other hand, certain agricultural practices are extremely harmful to the environment. In India, the situation is much, much worse. Delhi is ranked one of the most polluted cities in the world, and farming practices such as crop burning in North India help, help aid to this pollution crisis. Farmers burn their fields to their stubble before sowing a new crop, and the period between rice harvesting and sowing wheat is very short. So the quickest way to clear the field for the wheat is to burn the stubble. As farmers in Punjab burn their fields in October through November, a heavy smoke blankets Punjab and spreads towards India. Just three days after the volley last year, the air quality index was in Delhi was severe at 436. Forty percent of this was due to crop burning residue, causing the air to appear hazy and unbreathable. 
As a generation, we are unapologetically dependent on farmers to sustain us, yet they are struggling to sustain themselves. They are grappling with issues like pilferage, debt and low income, oppressive policies, and climate change. We need these farmers to grow our food and tend to the planet we have so shamelessly abused. You may be thinking, what can I do to help? First step would be to further educate yourself on the plight of smallholder farmers in India, around the world, and in your country. Get involved in the political discussion around government farm policies as they ultimately impact the food that you eat and the air that you breathe. It is not just a regional issue, but an issue that impacts our entire planet. Thank you so much and have a nice evening.